Hi, welcome to pre-algebra lesson 9-4, use probability models. In this lesson, we'll be able to use probability models to find probabilities of events. Let's look at explain it. The chess club has eight members. A new captain will be chosen by randomly selecting the name of one of the members. Leah and Luke both want to be captain. Leah says the chance that she will be chosen as captain is one out of two because she's either chosen for captain or she's not. Luke says the chance that he is chosen is one out of eight. So let's think about the situation. Do you agree with Leah's statement? Use a mathematical argument to justify your answer. So first of all, how many people do we have? We have eight members, right? There are, um, there's a captain selection time, right? A new captain will be chosen by randomly selecting the name of one of the members. Leah and Luke both want to be captain, but are they the only one whose name are, names are going to be drawn? No, it's going to be eight members chosen randomly, right? So... Um, so whether or not they want to be captain or not, everyone is going to be uh, involved in the selecting the name, right? Selection of the name. So if Leah says the chance that she will be chosen as captain is one out of two because she's either chosen for captain or she's not, is that true? It seems like her reasoning sounds right because yes there are two options oh she could be chosen or she could not be chosen but that's the option for her right the options that we see in the um in the situation is we're randomly select selecting the name of one of the members so there are actually eight options for this um situation so um no this is not going to be, she is not going to be correct. So you can write this down. No, while Leah will either be um, chosen or not, she is one out of eight people, right? Instead of the options that she wrote. Since a name will be randomly selected, there is no preference as to who is chosen for the team captain. Okay. What about Luke's statement? Would you agree with Luke's statement? Use a mathematical argument to justify your answer. What did Luke say? Luke said that um, he he is uh, the chance that he's chosen would be one out of eight. Is that correct? Yes, eight members. Luke is one option out of the eight different members. So one out of eight should be the right probability. So yes, since Luke is one out of the eight people, he has the same chance as everyone else. Luke has one out of eight or a 12.5% chance of being chosen as the team captain. Captain. Okay, so when we use a mathematical argument, we want to use probability. Let's look at focus on math practices. Look for relationships. How does the probability of Leah being chosen captain uh, compare to the probability of Luke being chosen captain? So what is the probability of Leah being chosen then? Since, the, um, since it is randomly selected out of the eight members, Leah is still one option out of the eight members, right? So Leah also has one out of eight or a 12.5% chance of being chosen as a team captain. So everyone has an equal chance, theoretically. So the probabilities are the same. And Luke being chosen for captain and Leah being chosen for um, captain are two equally likely outcomes, right? So each member has one out of eight chance of being chosen. Let's write that down, okay? So the probabilities are the same. They can equally have a chance of becoming a 
captain. So because we know that Luke and Leah both want to be captain, hopefully one of them becomes captain instead of other members who don't really care or who might not want to be a captain. Well, now is that fair? Um, there are there are there are other ways to choose a captain. So it might not be the most fair way to choose a captain, but that hey, that's a situation that we might have in a real world, real life situation. Okay, let's look at the essential question: How can a model be used to find a probability of an event? We'll look at the. We'll think about this question throughout the lesson. Example one: Develop a probability model. Mr. Campbell has a jar on his desk that contains ten marbles. At the end of class, each student draws a marble from the jar without looking. Okay, so it's randomly chosen. Notes its color and then puts it back in the in the jar. So then, everyone, when it when it draw when they draw the marble, they're gonna draw out of ten marbles. Okay, they're not gonna look, so they don't know which one they're choosing. So if a student draws a red marble, the student gets a pass on that day's homework. Ooh, how can the students determine the probability of drawing the red marble? Okay, um, there are ten marbles, and how many red marbles do we see? Just one. So, how can you use a model to help you predict what color marble will, will be drawn? So, we're gonna develop a probability model based on theoretical probability. What is a probability model? This is a new vocabulary. Probability model consists of the sample space and events within the sample space and their probability. Okay. What is a sample space? That's another vocabulary word. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. Okay, you're going to figure out all possible ways that you you can have a result with. Okay, so when a marble is drawn, there are ten possible outcomes because there are ten different marbles, right? Although we have same colored marbles, we have ten possible outcomes, right? So the sample space S could be notated as S equal to this bracket, and then one red, three greens, and then、um, one, two, three, four, five, six purples. So that's a sample space, all possible outcomes. Okay, and then. This is just one way to represent the sample space. You can also draw a table, or you can list them too. Okay, so then you're gonna list three possible events and their probability. So drawing a red marble would be the probability of red, and that would be how many red? One out of the total outcome, ten. Drawing a green, you have three greens, so that would be three out of the total ten. Drawing a purple, that would be six purple out of ten. So sample space is important because sometimes they don't tell you how many total outcomes you have. You have to be able to imagine and figure out what all the possible outcomes are, and that would be your total number of outcomes. Okay. The sample space is where where you would use、uh, as a denominator in the probability fraction. So the students in Mr. Campbell's class can use a probability model to determine that the probability of drawing the red marble is one out of ten. That's ten percent. Not too bad. It's still possible, right? So let's look at try it. Mr. Campbell decides that too many students are getting a pass on homework. He adds ten yellow marbles to the jar. Tell whether each part of the probability model does or does not change. So please fill in this blank by yourself and see if you can get it. Okay. Think about it. Pause the video and then fill in the blank and come back when you're ready. So the sample 
space does or does not change. The, sa the sample space does change. Right? Because your sample space is, uh, is all possible uh, outcomes, right? Set of all possible outcomes. If there are 10 more yellow marbles, then instead of 10 uh, at total different outcomes, you would have 20 because you have 20 marbles total, right? Out of the 20 marbles, you are just choosing one. So each event within the sample, sample space does or does not, does not change each event. So event, drawing a red, drawing a green, drawing a purple. But drawing a yellow is a new event, so we're not going to count that, okay? The probability of each event does change, though, okay? The, because the sample space has changed. So the new probability of drawing the red marble is 1 out of 20 instead of 10. So convince me, how does a probability model help you predict how likely an event is to occur? How is this helpful? How likely an event is to occur? Probability model can be analyzed to determine the likelihood of each outcome of the sample space. Is what we've learned so far, right? So let's write that down. There we go. Probability model can be analyzed to determine the likelihood of each outcome of the sample space. Okay, let's look at the next example, example two. Use a probability model to evaluate a situation. Miss Stillman has a marble jar for the same purpose, but students do not know the number of marbles or their colors. Each of 30 students draws a marble, notes its color, and then puts it back in a jar. Based on the results shown in the table, what can the students conclude about the probability of drawing a red marble? So now we don't really know how many marbles there actually are, but based on the data, um, we can use uh, we can use it to estimate, right? So so far the colors we've drawn are four red, eleven blues, and fifteen greens. So we're gonna develop a probability model based on the experimental probability. So this is experimental probability because we're using data, the past, uh, past data that actually happened to make a probability out of, okay? Because we don't know how many uh, marbles we actually have. So for the total outcome, the total data we have are 30 marbles total. So you add them all up, 4 plus 11 plus 15 is 30. So that could just be the total number of outcomes, although we don't know how many marbles we have, okay? So then the three possible events and their experimental probabilities would be the red marble, 4 out of 30, blue marble being 11 out of 30, and green marble having 15 out of 30 as an as a experimental probability. So based on this probability, Ms. Stillman's students can conclude that the probability of drawing the red marble is about 13 uh, and one and one third percent. That's, that's higher than uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Mr. Who was it? <laughs> uh, Campbell's class, right? Yeah, example three, use a probability model to make an estimate. Ms. Thilman tells her students that the jar contains 100 marbles. Ooh. Based on the table of marble colors after 60 draws, about how many marbles of each color are in the jar? So based on this, we're, we still don't know how many colors we have in the jar, but now we know the sample space would be 100, right? But based on the experimental probability, we're using this data. So the sample space that we're going to use, the total number of outcome is still going to be the sum of all these data. So 7 plus 20 plus 11 plus 32 would be 60. Okay, so we're not going to use 100 marbles because we're using 
the experimental probability, we're going to use the total number of data we have. So uh, the four possible events would be red, blue, orange, and green. So far, we've only drawn red, blue, orange, and green. So we only have experimental probability of red, blue, orange, and green. Does that make sense? So for red, we have 7 out of 60. Blue is 20 out of 60. Orange is 1 out of 60. Green is 32 out of 60. So that's just our experimental probability. The estimated number of marbles in the jar um, using this experimental probability, then we can make a proportion out of 100. And so that would mean we might we might have closer to 12 red marbles, 33 blue marbles, 2 orange marbles, and 53 green marbles. That's just an estimate, okay? All right, so let's look at try it. To reduce the number of homework passes, which color of marble should Ms. Stillman use as the pass on homework? Explain. So reduce the number of homework passes, we probably want the least amount of probability uh, the color the, the, the color of the marble that has the least number of probability, right? So looking at the red, blue, orange, and green marbles and their experimental probability, what do you think would be the best color to reduce the number of homework passes? Obviously, the orange marbles. That's the least number we have, right? So the orange. After 60 trials, um, the orange marble has the smallest experiment, total probability of being selected. So based on the experimental probability, we can estimate that we can uh, have a good mathematical estimate that the orange would give her uh, the reduction of the number of homer passes. Okay, let's write that down. Okay. So the orange, after 60 trials, the orange marble has the smallest experimental probability of being selected. Please write that down. Okay, let's summarize our lesson. The probability model can help you evaluate a chance process and its outcomes. You can develop a model using theoretical or experimental probability. We use more experimental probability in our examples, but please remember to use theoretical when it's appropriate. If we know the sample space, if we already know um, uh, the sample space and the number of outcomes that we want to uh, expect, then that's, that's best for theoretical probability. If we have data and we want to use data, we're using experimental probability, okay? So this is just an example. You roll number cube label from uh, one through six. The sample space would definitely be one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six outcomes. And for each number, rolling each number would be one out of six because it's randomly rolled, right? So that would be a theoretical probability. All right, that was um, it for this lesson. We learned um, using probability models in lesson 9-4. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask us in class. Otherwise, we'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.